Chapters 1 through 10 of First Clement, Robert's Donaldson Version. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 1 The Church of God which sojourns at Rome, to the Church of God sojourning at Corinth, to those who are called and sanctified by the will of God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from Almighty God through Jesus Christ be multiplied. Owing, dear brethren, to the sudden and successive calamitous events which have happened to ourselves, we feel that we have been somewhat tardy in turning our attention to the points respecting which you consulted us, and especially to that shameful and detestable sedition, utterly abhorrent to the elect of God which a few rash and self-confident persons have kindled to such a pitch of frenzy that your venerable and illustrious name, worthy to be universally loved, has suffered grievous injury. For who ever dwelt even for a short time among you, and did not find your faith to be as fruitful of virtue as it was firmly established? Who did not admire the sobriety and moderation of your godliness in Christ? who did not proclaim the magnificence of your habitual hospitality and who did not rejoice over your perfect and well-grounded knowledge for you did all things without respect of persons and walked in the commandments of god being obedient to those who had rule over you and giving all fitting honour to the presbyters among you you enjoined young men to be of a sober and serious mind you instructed your wives to do all things with a blameless, becoming, and pure conscience, loving their husbands as in duty bound. And you taught them that, living in the rule of obedience, they should manage their household affairs becomingly, and be in every respect marked by discretion. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 Moreover, you were all distinguished by humility, and were in no respect puffed up with pride, but yielded obedience rather than extorted it, and were more willing to give than to receive. Content with the provision which God had made for you, and carefully attending to his words, you were inwardly filled with his doctrine, and his sufferings were before your eyes. Thus a profound and abundant peace was given to you all, and you had an insatiable desire for doing good, while a full outpouring of the Holy Spirit was upon you all full of holy designs and with true earnestness of mind and godly confidence you stretched forth your hands to god almighty beseeching him to be merciful to you if you had been guilty of any involuntary transgression day and night you were anxious for the whole brotherhood that the number of god's elect might be saved with mercy and a good conscience you were sincere and uncorrupted and forgetful of injuries between one another Every kind of faction and schism was abominable in your sight. You mourned over the transgressions of your neighbors. Their deficiencies you deemed your own. You never grudged any act of kindness, being ready to every good work. Adorned by a thoroughly virtuous and religious life, you did all things in the fear of God. The commandments and ordinances of the Lord were written upon the tablets of your hearts. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 Every kind of honor and happiness was bestowed upon you, and then was fulfilled that which is written. My beloved ate and drank, and was enlarged and became fat and kicked. Hence flowed emulation and envy, strife and sedition, persecution and disorder, war and captivity. So the worthless rose up against the honored those of no reputation against such as were renowned, the foolish against the wise, the young against those advanced in years. For this reason, righteousness and peace are now far departed from you, inasmuch as every one abandons the fear of God, and is become blind in his faith, neither walks in the ordinances of his appointment, nor acts apart becoming a Christian, but walks after his own wicked lusts, resuming the practice of an unrighteous and ungodly envy, by which death itself entered into the world. End of chapter 3 Chapter 4 For thus it is written, And it came to pass after certain days that Cain brought of the fruits of the earth a sacrifice to God, 
and Abel also brought of the firstlings of his sheep, and of the fat thereof. And God had respect to Abel and to his offerings, but Cain and his sacrifices he did not regard. And Cain was deeply grieved, and his countenance fell. And God said to Cain, Why are you grieved, and why is your countenance fallen? If you offer rightly, but do not divide rightly, have you not sinned? Be at peace. Your offering returns to yourself, and you shall again possess it. And Cain said to Abel his brother, Let us go into the field. And it came to pass, while they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and killed him. You see, brethren, how envy and jealousy led to the murder of a brother. Through envy also our father Jacob fled from the face of Esau his brother. Envy made Joseph be persecuted unto death, and to come into bondage. Envy compelled Moses to flee from the face of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, when he heard these words from his fellow countryman. Who made you a judge or a ruler over us? Will you kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? On account of envy, Aaron and Miriam had to make their home outside of the camp. Envy brought down Dathan and Abiram alive to Hades, through the sedition which they excited against God's servant Moses. Through envy, David underwent the hatred not only of foreigners, but was also persecuted by Saul, king of Israel. End of chapter 4. Chapter 5. But not to dwell upon ancient examples, let us come to the most recent spiritual heroes. Let us take the noble examples furnished in our own generation. Through envy and jealousy, the greatest and most righteous pillars of the church have been persecuted and put to death. Let us set before our eyes the illustrious apostles. Peter, through unrighteous envy, endured not one or two, but numerous labors, and when he had finally suffered martyrdom, departed to the place of glory due to him. Owing to envy, Paul also obtained the reward of patient endurance, after being seven times thrown into captivity, compelled to flee and stoned. After preaching both in the east and west, he gained the illustrious reputation due to his faith, having taught righteousness to the whole world, and come to the extreme limit of the west, and suffered martyrdom under the prefects. Thus was he removed from the world, and went into the holy place, having proved himself a striking example of patience. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 To these men, who spent their lives in the practice of holiness, there is to be added a great multitude of the elect, who having through envy endured many indignities and tortures, furnished us with a most excellent example. Through envy those women, the Danaids and Dersi, being persecuted after they had suffered terrible and unspeakable torments, finished the course of their faith with steadfastness, and though weak in body, received a noble reward. Envy has alienated wives from their husbands, and changed that saying of our father Adam, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Envy and strife have overthrown great cities, and rooted up mighty nations. End of chapter 6. Chapter 7. These things, beloved, we write to you, not merely to admonish you of your duty, but also to remind ourselves. For we are struggling in the same arena, and the same conflict is assigned to both of us. So let us give up vain and fruitless cares, and approach to the glorious and venerable rule of our holy calling. Let us attend to what is good, pleasing and acceptable in the sight of him who formed us. Let us look steadfastly to the blood of Christ and see how precious that blood is to God, which, having been shed for our salvation, has set the grace of repentance before the whole world. Let us turn to every age that is past and learn that from generation to generation the Lord has granted a place of repentance to all who would be converted to him. Noah preached repentance, and as many as listened to him were saved. Jonah proclaimed destruction to the Ninevites, but they, repenting of their sins, propitiated God by prayer and obtained salvation, although they were aliens to the covenant of God. End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 The ministers of the grace of God have, by the Holy Spirit, spoken of repentance, and the Lord of all things has himself declared with an oath regarding it. 
as I live, says the Lord, I desire not the death of the sinner, but rather his repentance. Adding, moreover, this gracious declaration, Repent, O house of Israel, of your iniquity. Say to the children of my people, Though your sins reach from heaven to earth, and though they be redder than scarlet, and blacker than sackcloth, if you turn to me with your whole heart, and say, Father, I will listen to you, as to a holy people. And in another place he says, Wash and become clean, put away the wickedness of your souls from before my eyes. Cease from your evil ways, and learn to do well. Seek out judgment, deliver the oppressed, judge the fatherless, and see that justice is done to the widow. And come, and let us reason together. He declares, Though your sins be like crimson, I will make them white as snow. Though they be like scarlet, I will whiten them like wool. And if you are willing and obey me, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and will not listen to me, the sword shall devour you. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken these things. Desiring, therefore, that all his beloved should be partakers of repentance, he has, by his almighty will, established these declarations. End of chapter 8. Chapter 9. So let us yield obedience to his excellent and glorious will, and imploring his mercy and loving kindness, while we forsake all fruitless labors and strife and envy, which leads to death. Let us turn and have recourse to his compassions. Let us steadfastly contemplate those who have perfectly ministered to his excellent glory. Let us take, for instance, Enoch, who, being found righteous in obedience, was translated, and death was never known to happen to him. Noah, being found faithful, preached regeneration to the world through his ministry, and the Lord saved by him the animals which, with one accord, entered into the ark. End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 Abraham, called the friend, was found faithful inasmuch as he obeyed the words of God. He, in the exercise of obedience, went out from his own country, and from his kindred, and from his father's house, in order that by forsaking a small territory, and a weak family, and an insignificant house, he might inherit the promises of God. For God said to him, Leave your country, and your kindred, and your father's house, and go into the land which I shall show you. And I will make you a great nation, and will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be blessed. And I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And again on his departing from Lot, God said to him, Lift up your eyes, and look from the place where you now are, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the lands which you see, to you will I give it, and to your seed for ever. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall your seed also be numbered. And again the scripture says, God brought forth Abram, and said to him, Look up now to heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them, so shall your seed be. And Abram believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. On account of his faith and hospitality, a son was given him in his old age, and in the exercise of obedience he offered him as a sacrifice to God on one of the mountains which he showed him. End of chapter 10